Hello everyone, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. Now you may have thought that the portable ADSB market had about run its course, but surprise, here's a new product from a company called Level Technology. Now Level's previous product was called the iLevel, and it combined ADSB with an AHARS unit, and, and that would output this data wirelessly to a tablet so you could have a portable EFIS. The problem with that kind of technology is that the airspeed you see is actually GPS ground speed and the altitude is actually GPS altitude. To address that, uh, Level has come up with the AW, which is really a portable Atahars. Let's see how they do it. Well, it's really pretty simple conceptually. If you turn the unit around, there are two ports here. One is for dynamic or pitot pressure and the other is for static pressure. So if you plumb those two into the aircraft pitot static system, you have your reference pressures. Now, it's quite obvious from looking at this unit that it is intended for remote mount. These two jacks here, one is for a GPS remote antenna and one is for ADSB remote. And if you turn around and look at the other side, you've got a standard DB9 connector there, and that's for power in and data out, also for remote mount. Installing the AW is really pretty simple in an experimental or maybe an LSA, but probably a little bit more of a challenge in a certified airplane because you're going to have to tap into the aircraft's pitot system, and when you do that, the system will still have to pass the standard checks. So you should check with your shop or the local FISDO to see if they have any heartburn with that. Now here in the Cub, I was just going to tee into the existing pitot system, but then I got a better idea. I installed my own temporary pitot tube. After all, what is a pitot tube but just a simple little pipe and some hose? So I ran my tubing down the length of the strut into the cockpit through the sliding window. Now obviously this isn't corrected for position errors, but we're not dealing with a Boeing 787 here. On the other hand, the Cub doesn't catch fire every other week either. Okay, on that unnecessarily snarky comment, it's time to take the I-Level AW flying, and for that, you need an app to support the AW, and I'm using Wing X. They've just come up with a revision to support pedostatic inputs, and there are a couple of other apps that also support it, including uh, Xavion and a level utility called AHARS 2.0. So what we're looking at here is genuine airspeed and pressure altitude along the top of the display, as opposed to GPS ground speed and GPS altitude. One thing that's immediately noticeable when you're flying this thing is that real airspeed damps a lot better. You don't get the kind of noise and spikiness in the display value that you do with GPS-derived speed. But the acid test is that indicated airspeed doesn't change with direction of flight the way GPS ground speed does. And the way to see that is in a turn. So let's take a look. So on the top frame, I've got the tablet set up to show GPS speed and altitude, and the bottom frame has a pitot static engaged. Note that in the turn, and this is a level turn by the way, the GPS speed is changing because I'm crossing the wind line. Remember, you're looking at ground speed, but the PM static version is stable, just like an airspeed indicator should be. I think that's very cool. Now, a earlier, we got a look at that little power and data jack in the back of the unit. That means that uh, although the AW has an internal battery and it can run entirely on that, it can also run on ship's power, 8 volts to 32 volts. The AW also has a couple of 232 inputs, so you can connect it to traffic devices and other instruments in the panel. The AW sells for $13.95. Now, if you'd like to see more, check out the company's website at level.com. That's L-E-V-I-L.com. Or they'll be at AirVenture in Oshkosh, which, checking my calendar, is next week. So we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting.